Are you tired of feeling controlled by your emotions? Do you ever wish you could just stay calm, cool, and collected, no matter what life throws your way? If you answered yes, then you're not alone. We all grapple with overwhelming emotions from time to time. However, what if there was a method to assert authority over your emotions rather than letting them dictate your responses? That's where Stoicism comes in. Stoicism is an ancient philosophy that teaches you how to live a virtuous and happy life even in the face of adversity. And one of the core tenets of Stoicism is emotional control. In this video, I'm going to share 13 Stoic lessons that will help you control your emotions and live a more peaceful and fulfilling life. Remember, you're not navigating this journey alone. I am here to assist you, and the extensive and supportive Stoic community is ready to engage. Subscribe, join the comments, and share your experiences with others who are also seeking emotional control and a more fulfilling life. So are you ready to learn how to control your emotions? Let's go. Lesson number one, the observer within. Envision yourself on a ship's deck, swayed by the tumultuous waves of an emotional tempest. To guide the vessel to tranquility, one must initially comprehend the essence of the emotional sea being traversed. This constitutes the core concept of the observer within, the inaugural lesson in our exploration of emotional mastery. Seneca, the Roman philosopher, underscored introspection as the linchpin of this comprehension. His famous words, the chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself which are external, not depending on me, and which have to do with the choices I control, urge us to become spectators of our emotions. This entails stepping back from the immediate experience to acquire a broader viewpoint. Visualize yourself not as the storm, but as a steadfast lighthouse amid the disorder. Practices such as mindfulness, encompassing meditation and journaling. Act as your guiding light, revealing the extensive terrain of your emotions. Through these exercises, you start recognizing the physical sensations linked to various emotions. The constriction of your chest in anger and the fluttering of your stomach in excitement. You also become aware of the thoughts that emerge, self-criticism fostering shame, and optimistic anticipation propelling joy. Crucially, this observation isn't for judgment, but for comprehension. By merely observing emotions impartially, you detach yourself from their immediate influence. They are perceived as fleeting occurrences like clouds drifting across the vast expanse of your existence. This detachment empowers you to make deliberate choices in response, rather than being carried away by the emotional current. The primary lesson from the observer within underscores that to regulate emotions, one must initially recognize them. Through mindful observation, you acquire the invaluable ability to differentiate between external storms and the choices within your control. This awareness forms the groundwork for developing skills to navigate emotional waters with increased composure and resilience. Bear in mind that adopting the role of an observer is an ongoing journey, not a fixed destination. Exercise patience with yourself and celebrate each stride toward heightened self-awareness. As you nurture this internal observer, you unlock the means to navigate your emotions with newfound freedom and purpose. Lesson number two, labeling your feelings. Envision emotions as an extensive library housing myriad books, each narrating a distinctive story. The commonly used terms happy and sad resemble well-worn paperbacks on the shelf, easily accessible yet offering limited depth. To authentically grasp the complexities of your emotional realm, it is essential to move beyond these generic labels and explore the nuanced spectrum within. Epictetus, the esteemed Stoic philosopher, underscored this concept, asserting, it is not events that disturb us, but our opinions about them. This insight implies that the crux of managing emotions lies not in the events themselves, but in how we interpret and categorize them. 
While a missed promotion might prompt an initial feeling of sadness, a deeper exploration uncovers a tapestry of emotions. Disappointment from missed opportunities, frustration with perceived setbacks, or even a hint of anger at external factors. Consider the potency of a more extensive emotional vocabulary. Rather than simply categorizing yourself as sad, you may discern nuances like disappointment, frustration, and perhaps even a trace of relief. This nuanced understanding enables you to tailor your responses more effectively. Instead of lingering in generic sadness, you can address the specific emotions in play. Seeking support for disappointment, channeling for stradion into productive action, or acknowledging the relief from escaping an unsatisfactory situation. Picture this labeling process as akin to identifying colors in a painting. With only a few basic colors, you get a vague impression. However, by pinpointing specific hues like cerulean blue, burnt umber, or cadmium yellow, you create a vivid and nuanced image. The same principle applies to your emotions. The more precise your labels, the deeper your comprehension, and the more adept you become at managing your emotional reactions. Importantly, labeling is not a form of judgment. It serves to bring clarity and awareness to your inner world. Much like a botanist identifying various flower species, you are simply acknowledging the distinct emotional landscape within you. This awareness empowers you to navigate this landscape with increased skill and intention, fostering a profound connection with yourself and your emotions. The next time you encounter an emotion, resist settling for a generic label. Instead, delve into the intricacies, unveiling the strength of a more refined emotional vocabulary. This practice is the gateway to a profound self-understanding and the ability to craft more adept responses to the ever-shifting currents of your emotional journey. Lesson number three, accepting all emotions. Envision yourself standing on the shore, observing the ocean, waves crash against the rocks, some gentle and playful, others forceful and formidable. Yet you wouldn't attempt to alter their nature Instead, you accept them as they are. Similarly, within the expansive ocean of your emotions, you'll encounter serene tides of joy and contentment, as well as potent surges of anger, fear, or sadness. Lesson 3. Accepting all emotions encourages us to approach these emotional waves with equal respect and understanding. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, imparts a powerful lesson with his words. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be, be one. This quote prompts a shift from scrutinizing our emotions to simply acknowledging and accepting them. Rather than resisting or suppressing uncomfortable feelings, the emphasis is on recognizing their presence without judgment or self-condemnation. Consider accepting your emotions akin to accepting the weather. Just as you wouldn't argue with a rainy day, attempting to force sunshine, you adapt with an umbrella or rain gear. Likewise, accepting an emotion doesn't imply condoning or identifying with it. It means acknowledging its presence, understanding its message, and consciously choosing how to respond. It's essential to recognize that even the most challenging emotions serve a purpose. Anger might signal a boundary violation, fear could warn of potential danger, and sadness might indicate the need for self-care. Accepting these emotions as messengers provides valuable insights into our needs and values. Imagine a locked box containing a vital message for your well-being. Judging the box won't unlock it. Similarly, judging your emotions hinders you from accessing their valuable messages. Acceptance becomes the key, opening the box and allowing you to understand what lies within. However, accepting emotions doesn't equate to passively letting them control you. It involves creating space for their experience while consciously choosing your response. You may need to assertively express your anger, address the underlying fear causing anxiety, or permit yourself to fully grieve during moments of sadness. By accepting the emotion initially, you gain clarity and space to opt for a healthy and constructive response. Remember, 
accepting all emotions is an ongoing journey, not a fixed destination. There will be days when judgment creeps in, and that's acceptable. Be patient with yourself, practice self-compassion, and consistently return to acceptance as your guiding principle. As you embrace the complete spectrum of your emotional experience, you unlock a profound understanding of yourself, cultivate resilience, and navigate life's waves with increased grace and wisdom. Therefore, when faced with a challenging emotion, recall Marcus Aurelius's wisdom. Don't waste time arguing. Simply accept the wave, comprehend its message, and choose to respond with awareness and compassion, both for yourself and for the vast and intricate ocean of emotions within you. Lesson number four, understanding the triggers. Envision strolling through a forest laden with concealed tripwires, each capable of propelling you into a whirlwind of intense emotions. This metaphor aptly captures our emotional landscape, where hidden triggers lie in wait, ready to unleash a cascade of reactions. Lesson four, understanding the triggers imparts the vital skill of identifying these tripwires empowering us to traverse our emotional terrain with heightened awareness and control. Seneca, the Roman philosopher and advisor, provided valuable insight into this process. We are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more from imagination than from reality. This quote underscores the influence of misperception in triggering our emotions. Often, it's not the situation itself, but our interpretation that ignites the emotional wildfire. Hence, the initial step in disarming these tripwires involves self-reflection. Pay close attention to situations, people, or specific words consistently evoking intense emotions. Journaling post such encounters proves to be a potent tool, aiding in pattern recognition and theme identification. Ask yourself, what transpired? How did I feel at that moment? What thoughts occupied my mind? Has this occurred before? What might be triggering this reaction? By probing into these questions, you start to map the emotional minefield within. Once triggers are identified, the power dynamic shifts from passive victim to proactive observer. This newfound awareness empowers you to prepare healthier responses. Imagine encountering a familiar trigger. Rather than succumbing to an immediate emotional surge, you pause, recalling insights gained from self-reflection. You recognize the trigger and anticipate potential reactions. Now, armed with awareness, choices unfold. You can opt to challenge your thoughts. Are your interpretations accurate and helpful? De-escalate, take a deep breath, Practice mindfulness or remove yourself from the situation. Prepare a healthier response. Express emotions assertively, set boundaries, or engage in self-soothing activities. Understanding triggers isn't about eliminating them entirely. Life inevitably presents challenges. The crux lies in transitioning from unconscious reaction to conscious response. By pinpointing triggers, you acquire the tools to navigate them with heightened awareness, resilience, and emotional intelligence. This journey of self-discovery demands time and patience. Be gentle with yourself as you traverse the emotional landscape within. Celebrate progress, regardless of size. As you gain a deeper understanding of triggers, you unlock the ability to choose responses, transforming from a passive observer to a skilled navigator of your emotional terrain. Embark on this exploration with curiosity and an open mind. Remember, the map to calmer emotional waters isn't found in avoiding triggers, but in understanding them and using that knowledge to chart a course toward a more fulfilling and empowered life. Lesson number five, challenging unhelpful beliefs. Picture yourself standing in front of an expansive emotional terrain where storms arise unexpectedly, driven by concealed forces beneath the surface. These unseen forces represent your restrictive beliefs and deeply ingrained ideas about yourself and the world, influencing how you interpret and react to situations. 
Lesson 5. Confronting unhelpful beliefs provides you with the means to identify and transform these limiting beliefs, enabling you to confront emotional upheavals with enhanced clarity and control. Epictetus, the influential Stoic philosopher, presented a potent tool. It is not that things happen to me, but that I react to them in a certain way. This quote underscores the pivotal role of perception in shaping our emotions. The triggering event itself doesn't cause the storm, rather, it is our beliefs about it. For example, the conviction that I'm not good enough can intensify self-criticism and shame even in response to a minor setback. So, how can we uncover these hidden gems in our mental landscape? The initial step is cultivating self-awareness. Assume the role of a detective for your own emotions. When an emotional storm brews, explore the internal dialogues. What narratives are you constructing? Are you categorizing yourself as incompetent, unworthy, or unlovable? These recurring themes often indicate underlying limiting beliefs. Once you've identified these potential culprits, don't feel overwhelmed. Remember, they are beliefs, not absolute truths. You have the ability to question their validity and utility. Are they based on past experiences that may not accurately represent the present? Are they generalizations derived from isolated incidents? Are they fueled by an inner critic whose perspective might be distorted? This questioning process demands compassion and logic. Pose inquiries such as, what evidence supports this belief? Are there alternative explanations for the situation? What are the consequences of holding this belief? Does it empower you or hinder you? How would I feel if I embraced a different belief about myself or the situation? It's crucial to recognize that challenging limiting beliefs isn't about instantly achieving positivity. It's a journey of self-exploration and discovery. Be patient with yourself and acknowledge even the smallest shifts in perspective. As you reframe your mental framework, you'll observe a significant transformation. Imagine encountering the same situation that previously triggered a storm. However, this time, you identify the limiting belief beneath the surface. You confront it with reason and compassion, replacing it with a more empowering belief such as, I am capable and open to learning from this experience. With this altered perspective, the emotional storm loses its intensity. You feel empowered to respond constructively rather than succumbing to negativity. Remember, confronting unhelpful beliefs is an ongoing process. New situations may revive familiar patterns. However, with each confrontation, you gain strength and resilience. You become the architect of your own narrative, liberated from limiting beliefs. As Epictetus advises, you learn to respond to events in a manner that serves you, cultivating calmer emotional seas and navigating life's challenges with increased wisdom and self-compassion. Embark on this journey of self-discovery with open eyes and a curious mind. The key to tranquility lies not in avoiding storms, but in learning to waltz with them, armed with awareness and tools to navigate them gracefully, fostering inner peace. Lesson number six, reframing your perspective. Envision yourself atop a mountain, surveying the expansive landscape before you. The same scenery can take on vastly different hues based on the weather. On a clear day, you revel in the sun's warmth, marveling at the panoramic views. Yet under stormy clouds, the identical landscape feels desolate and foreboding. In a similar vein, our emotions are molded by our perceptions. Lesson 6. Shifting your outlook provides you with the ability to adjust your mental lens, turning emotional challenges into opportunities for personal growth and resilience. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, imparted a profound wisdom. Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is an interpretation not reality. This quote serves as a reminder that the world lacks an inherent emotional charge. It is our interpretations that imbue events with negativity, frustration, or joy. 
So how can we alter our perspective and gracefully navigate emotional challenges? The initial step is cultivating awareness. Pay heed to your automatic thoughts and interpretations during emotionally charged situations. Are you categorizing a mistake as a failure rather than a learning experience? Are you perceiving someone's silence as rejection instead of neutrality? Recognizing these ingrained patterns is pivotal for reframing. Once you identify your interpretations, question them with reason and curiosity. Ask yourself, is this interpretation helpful in serving me? Are there alternative ways to view the situation? What evidence supports this interpretation and what evidence might contradict it? Remember, reframing is not about disregarding reality or minimizing challenges. It's about finding a more empowering perspective that enables constructive responses. Consider receiving negative feedback at work. Instead of interpreting it as, I'm not good enough, reframe it as, this feedback provides an opportunity to improve. This shift empowers you to seek guidance and growth, transforming the perceived setback into a stepping stone for progress. Think of reframing as adjusting the focus of your mental camera. By altering your perspective, you can bring different facets of the situation into sharp relief. You might uncover hidden opportunities, acknowledge overlooked strengths, or find humor where frustration once prevailed. As your reframing skills develop, you'll witness a profound transformation. Envision encountering a situation that previously triggered negativity. This time, however, you consciously apply reframing. You identify your initial interpretation, challenge its helpfulness, and explore alternative perspectives. With a shift in perception, the emotional intensity diminishes. You feel empowered to approach the situation with composure, clarity, and a sense of possibility. Remember, reframing is an ongoing practice. There will be days when old patterns resurface, yet with each deliberate effort, you enhance your ability to choose your perspective. Like a skilled photographer, you learn to capture the beauty and potential in every scene, transforming your emotional landscape into a canvas of resilience, growth, and newfound freedom. Embark on this journey of self-discovery with an open mind and a curious heart. Remember, the key to emotional mastery lies not in controlling external events, but in mastering your internal interpretations. As Marcus Aurelius suggests, learn to see beyond the clouds and discover the radiant sun that shines within you. Lesson number seven, the power of pause. Envision yourself standing on the precipice of a cliff, the wind tousling your hair, adrenaline surging through your veins. But before you leap, a subtle voice whispers, wait. This encapsulates the essence of the power of pause an essential lesson in emotional mastery emphasized by Seneca, the Roman philosopher and advisor. He cautioned, we should not be surprised that most people err since they act before thinking what they should do. In the heat of the moment, emotions can act like powerful currents, compelling impulsive reactions. Lesson seven, the art of pause equips you with the ability to create a gap between stimulus and response empowering you to make deliberate choices with wisdom and intention. Think of the pause as a mental release valve. When faced with a challenging situation or a surge of emotion, the natural inclination is to react immediately. This often results in regrettable words, hasty decisions, and actions driven by emotions rather than reason. The pause, however, introduces a crucial space between the trigger and your response. It enables you to step back, observe, and consciously choose how to proceed. Seneca provided various tools to cultivate this pause. The deep breath. Inhale deeply, feeling the air fill your lungs. Exhale slowly, releasing tension and calming your mind. Repeat until you feel centered and grounded. Mindful counting. Focus on counting slowly, either silently or aloud. This simple act diverts your mind from the immediate emotion, bringing your attention to the present moment. 
stepping away. Physically distance yourself from the situation if possible. Take a walk, have a glass of water, or step into another room. This creates physical space, mirroring the emotional distance you seek. Remember, the pause is not about suppressing your emotions. It's about acknowledging them without judgment and creating room for conscious choice. Within this space, you can identify the emotion. What are you feeling? Is it anger, fear, sadness, or something else? Labeling the emotion aids in understanding its source and potential impact. Examine the trigger. What triggered this emotion? Is it a person, a situation, or a specific thought? Understanding the trigger provides valuable context. Consider your options. What choices do you have in this situation? What are the potential consequences of each option? Evaluate your options with reason and compassion. With practice, the pause evolves beyond a mere technique. It becomes a habit. You learn to instinctively create space between stimulus and response, allowing for deliberate and measured reactions. Envision facing a situation that once provoked an impulsive outburst. This time, you pause. You take a deep breath, count silently, and step away if needed. In this space, you identify the anger, understand the trigger, and consider your options. You choose to express your concerns assertively, avoiding hurtful words or actions. Mastering the pause is an ongoing journey, not a final destination. There will be instances when you revert to old patterns. However, with each intentional pause, you enhance your self-awareness and emotional intelligence. You become the architect of your responses, no longer beholden to fleeting emotions. As Seneca advocates, you learn to think before you act, transforming the pause into a potent tool for navigating life's challenges with grace, wisdom, and emotional control. Lesson number eight, expressing emotions healthily. Envision an exquisite vase brimming with lively flowers. Picture those flowers ensnared within, their hues fading, their essence stifled. This analogy accurately portrays the repercussions of suppressing our emotions. Lesson 8. Healthy expression of emotions urges us to liberate the emotional vase, allowing the wholesome release of emotions to foster our well-being and personal development. While the Stoic philosopher Epictetus discouraged dwelling on negative emotions, his message did not advocate for suppression. Instead, it emphasized selecting constructive and healthful avenues for expression. Confining emotions may result in a detrimental accumulation, manifesting as stress, anxiety, or even physical ailments. Conversely, constructive expression permits us to process emotions, attain clarity, and advance with increased resilience. So, how can we uncork the emotional bottle and express our emotions constructively? Here are some invaluable strategies. Seek a supportive ear. Share your feelings openly with a trusted friend, family member, therapist, or counselor. Doing so in a secure and supportive environment can validate your emotions, provide diverse perspectives, and alleviate emotional burdens. Embrace creative expression, write, paint, dance, sing, or partake in any creative outlet that resonates with you. Channeling emotions into artistic expression facilitates a deeper understanding and enables the release of pent-up feelings in a healthful manner. Engage in physical activity. Physical exercise serves as a potent tool for emotional release. Whether through running, dancing, or simple stretching and deep breathing, movement helps dissipate tension, elevate mood, and enhance overall well-being. Remember, healthy expression isn't solely verbal. Acknowledging emotions through journaling, meditation, or connecting with nature can be profoundly beneficial. The key is discovering outlets that suit you, enabling emotions to flow constructively. Additional tips for healthy expression include Practice non-judgmental self-compassion. Acknowledge and accept your emotions without self-criticism. Utilize I statements. 
communicate emotions without blaming others by framing statements with, I feel, instead of, you make me. Establish boundaries. If expressing emotions becomes overwhelming, it's acceptable to set boundaries. Take time for yourself or communicate a need for space. Mastering healthy expression is a continuous journey, not a fixed destination. Expect occasional setbacks, imperfect expressions, or lapses into unhealthy patterns. Be patient, celebrate progress, and explore diverse outlets for expression. As you cultivate this skill, you'll gain a profound understanding of yourself, strengthen relationships, and navigate life's challenges with enhanced emotional intelligence and resilience. Lesson number nine, the magic of gratitude. Visualize standing on a wind-whipped cliff, waves crashing against rocks and dark clouds obscuring the sun. This evocative scene mirrors life's storms, moments of loss, disappointment, or formidable challenges. Yet amid these tempests, a lighthouse stands tall, its beam piercing the darkness, providing hope and guidance. Lesson 9. Harnessing gratitude as enchantment introduces this lighthouse. The transformative power of gratitude, illuminating our emotional landscape and fostering resilience in adversity. The Roman Emperor and Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius eloquently captured the essence of gratitude. Dwell on the beauty of life, watch the stars, and run with the wind. His words urge us to shift focus from storm clouds to enduring beauty during challenges. Gratitude isn't about ignoring difficulties, it's about acknowledging them while choosing to concentrate on the blessings both significant and small, enriching our lives. How does this magic of gratitude work? The answer lies in its profound impact on our emotional well-being and resilience in facing challenges. Here are the key benefits. Shifts focus. Gratitude redirects attention from scarcity to abundance, significantly influencing emotional states, fostering contentment, and reducing negativity. Boosts resilience. Appreciating the positive aspects of our lives builds inner strength. In times of difficulty, drawing upon this wellspring reminds us of past triumphs and enduring blessings. Grounds in the present. Gratitude prompts genuine appreciation of the present, savoring small joys and unnoticed wonders. This mindful awareness fosters peace amid life's ever-changing currents. How can we cultivate this transformative practice? Here are practical tips. Start a gratitude journal. Take a few minutes daily to jot down three to five things you're grateful for, cultivating a deeper appreciation over time. Practice mindfulness. Pause mindfully throughout the day to appreciate surroundings, sensations, or moments. These small acts of mindful gratitude nourish well-being. Express gratitude regularly. Share appreciation verbally or through notes. Thanking others reinforces gratitude's positive impact and strengthens relationships. Cultivating gratitude isn't about forcing positivity, but acknowledging reality while choosing to focus on the good. It's a practice, not a destination, requiring consistent effort. Be patient, celebrate progress, and witness gratitude's enchantment unfold in your life. As you nurture this practice, discover newfound resilience a deeper appreciation for life's blessings, and a guiding light through even the darkest emotional storms. Lesson number 10. Self-compassion is key. Picture standing before a magnificent garden, its vibrant flowers exploding in a riot of color. Yet amidst this beauty, you notice a wilting rose, its petals drooping, struggling to thrive. This rose symbolizes our own selves, capable of flourishing with self-compassion, but vulnerable to withering under the harsh winds of self-criticism. Lesson 10. The essence of self-compassion equips you with tools to nurture the fertile ground of self-compassion, enabling your emotional well-being to blossom even amidst life's challenges. 
The Roman philosopher and advisor Seneca shared a profound insight. The greatest remedy for anger is delay. He reminds us that reacting instantly with self-criticism often fuels negativity and impetus growth. In contrast, self-compassion offers a gentler, more nurturing approach, urging use to extend the same kindness and understanding to ourselves as that we readily offer to others. But why is self-compassion so crucial for emotional well-being? Here are some of its key benefits. Reduces stress and anxiety. Practicing self-compassion halts harsh self-judgment, leading to lower stress and anxiety levels. This inner peace empowers us to navigate challenges with clarity and calmness. Boosts self-esteem. Embracing imperfections and mistakes as part of the human experience builds a foundation of self-worth and confidence. This healthy self-esteem encourages risk-taking, learning from setbacks, and embracing our authentic selves. Motivates change. Self-compassion doesn't condone unhealthy behaviors, but creates a safe space for self-reflection and growth. Rather than feeling shame or blame, we approach our shortcomings with understanding, fostering a desire to learn and improve. How do we cultivate this fertile ground of self-compassion within ourselves? Here are practical tips. Practice mindful self-awareness. Acknowledge your inner critic without judgment and respond with kindness and understanding. Forgive yourself. Everyone makes mistakes. Forgive yourself. Focus on learning and move forward. Holding on to guilt impedes emotional growth. Treat yourself with kindness. Extend the same encouragement and support to yourself as you would to a dear friend. Celebrate successes and offer comfort during challenges. Engage in enjoyable activities. Prioritize activities that bring joy and relaxation, nurturing both physical and emotional well-being. Cultivating self-compassion is a journey, not a destination. There will be days when self-criticism creeps in, and that's okay. Be patient, celebrate progress, and continue nurturing the garden of self-compassion within. As Seneca suggests, delay the urge for self-criticism and choose instead the gentle touch of understanding. With consistent practice, witness the vibrant bloom of emotional well-being, resilience, and self-acceptance unfolding in your life. Lesson number 11, Seeking Support. Picture yourself sailing across a vast ocean, feeling the wind in your hair and the sun reflecting off the waves. However, amid this beauty, a storm looms with dark clouds, threatening to overturn your vessel. In this challenging moment, do you attempt to endure the storm alone, or do you turn to the assistance of seasoned sailors by your side? Lesson 11, titled Seeking Support, Advocates for the Ladder, emphasizing that navigating emotional storms is seldom best done in isolation. Similar to the sentiment expressed by Seneca, the Roman philosopher who stated, we are all fellow travelers on a journey toward death. Life's emotional terrain is better navigated with supportive companions rather than in solitude. While mental health struggles may feel deeply personal, they need not be born in solitude. Seeking professional help is not a sign of weakness. Instead, it is a courageous acknowledgement of self-awareness and a wise investment in one's well-being. Just as consulting a doctor for physical ailments is considered essential, seeking professional support for emotional challenges is equally crucial. So, how can therapy aid you on your journey? Here are some key advantages. Expert guidance. Therapists, as trained professionals, possess a wealth of knowledge and tools to help you comprehend your emotions, recognize unhealthy patterns, and develop coping mechanisms. They serve as guides, illuminating a path toward emotional well-being, safe space for exploration. Therapy offers a confidential and non-judgmental environment where you can openly explore your thoughts, feelings, and experiences without fearing criticism. This supportive space encourages self-reflection and growth. Tailored support, 
Acknowledging individual uniqueness, therapy works with you to create a personalized approach addressing your specific needs and circumstances. This ensures the most effective support tailored to you. Empowerment and skills. Therapy goes beyond conversation, providing practical tools and skills to manage emotions, navigate challenges, and build resilience. The outcome is a sense of empowerment to handle future storms with increased confidence and self-compassion. Remember, seeking support is an ongoing journey that may fluctuate based on your needs. There is no shame in seeking help during challenging times or desiring continuous support for personal growth. Additional tips for seeking support include research. Identify a therapist whose qualifications and approach align with your needs. Seek recommendations from your doctor, friends, or family. Ask questions. Inquire about the therapist's experience, approach, and any concerns you may have. It's crucial to feel comfortable and confident in your choice. Be patient. Therapy is a gradual process, requiring time to see results. Patience with yourself and trust in the process are key. Celebrate progress. Recognize and celebrate positive changes, no matter how small, along the way. In essence, embracing support is not solely about overcoming challenges. It is an investment in emotional well-being, paving the way for a brighter future. As Seneca suggests, by seeking support, we allow others to walk alongside us, sharing the load and guiding us toward emotional wholeness, a life marked by greater peace and self-acceptance. Lesson number 12. Celebrate Small Victories Envision ascending a majestic mountain, the wind rushing through your hair, muscles throbbing with exertion. Upon reaching a plateau, instead of reveling in the breathtaking scenery, you criticize yourself for not ascending higher. Regrettably, this mirrors how we often approach our emotional journeys. We fixate on the summit, neglecting the substantial progress we've already achieved. Lesson 12. Acknowledge Minor. Achievements urges you to alter your perspective, emphasizing that each step forward, no matter how small, constitutes a victory deserving of applause. As Stoic philosopher Epictetus asserted, man is not disturbed by events, but by the views he takes of them. Recognizing and applauding your progress enhances motivation and lays the foundation for ongoing emotional development. Why is it crucial to celebrate minor victories? Here are some key benefits. Boosts motivation. Acknowledging progress, regardless of its magnitude, reinforces a sense of accomplishment, motivating you to persist on your journey. It fuels the internal drive that propels you forward, even when faced with challenges. Increases self-compassion. Commending your efforts fosters self-compassion and understanding. It encourages you to value the hard work you invest, independent of the outcome, fostering a basis for healthy self-esteem. Shifts perspective. Applauding minor victories helps reframe your perception of progress. Your journey is seen as a series of steps, each contributing to overall growth and emotional mastery. Cultivates gratitude. Recognizing progress naturally nurtures gratitude for your efforts and positive changes. This appreciation sets the stage for further growth and reinforces a positive outlook. How can you integrate this practice into your daily life? Consider these practical tips. Track your progress, maintain a journal, or utilize a progress tracker to document both major and minor wins. Reflecting on your journey can be highly motivating and unveil patterns of positive change. Celebrate publicly and privately. Share your achievements with supportive loved ones, but also take a moment to privately celebrate, acknowledging your inner strength and resilience. Reward yourself. 
establish small rewards for reaching milestones, fostering a strong connection between effort and positive outcomes. Focus on the process. Avoid fixating solely on the end goal. Revel in the process itself. Appreciate the small victories, moments of self-discovery, and challenges overcome. Remember, celebrating minor victories is not about self-indulgence. It's about recognizing the value of your journey and the potency of consistent effort. By embracing this practice, you'll nurture motivation, resilience, and self-worth, empowering you to conquer even the most daunting emotional climbs. Lesson number 13. Remember, it's a journey. Picture embarking on an expansive adventure, not with a predetermined destination, but through a dynamic landscape teeming with winding paths, concealed treasures, and unforeseen challenges. This serves as a fitting analogy for our emotional journey, an ongoing exploration fueled by self-discovery, growth, and resilience. Lesson 13. Embrace the unfolding path emphasizes that emotional mastery is not a final destination, but an ongoing process of learning and evolution. Echoing the words of Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, life is a series of little initiatives, like a wrestler coming back at the end of every fall. This profound statement encourages us to embrace the highs and lows, victories and setbacks recognizing that genuine growth occurs along the way. Why is adopting this journey mentality crucial for emotional well-being? Here are some key benefits. Reduces pressure. Viewing emotional mastery as a destination sets the stage for disappointment and frustration. The journey approach allows room for setbacks and imperfections, nurturing patience and self-compassion throughout the process promotes continuous learning. Embracing the journey opens us to perpetual learning and growth. Every experience, positive or negative, becomes an opportunity to gain insights and develop new skills, enhancing our emotional intelligence. Boosts resilience. The journey mentality fortifies our ability to rebound from challenges. Setbacks are seen as temporary hurdles, not permanent obstacles fostering resilience and the determination to keep progressing. Cultivates acceptance. Accepting life as a journey with its inevitable ups and downs enables us to be more present and find peace amid the ebb and flow of emotions. We learn to accept ourselves, flaws and all on this ever evolving path. How can we instill this journey mentality in our daily lives? Consider these practical tips. Celebrate every step. Acknowledge and celebrate your progress, irrespective of its size. Each step forward and each lesson learned contributes to your overall emotional growth and merits appreciation. Embrace imperfections. Recognize that setbacks and imperfections are inevitable. View them as opportunities for learning, not failures, and leverage them to fuel your ongoing development. Focus on the process. Relish the journey of self-discovery. Rather than fixating on a final goal, appreciate the present moment, the challenges surmounted, and the insights gained along the way. Practice. Self-compassion. Extend kindness to yourself, akin to how you would support a friend on their journey. Provide yourself with encouragement, understanding, and support during the highs and lows. Remember, the path to emotional mastery isn't a linear one, it's a winding trail with twists, turns, and unexpected detours. Embrace the adventure, celebrate your progress, and glean wisdom from every experience. As Marcus Aurelius advises, rise after each fall, learn from each challenge, and recognize that the true magic lies in the unfolding of your distinctive and ever-evolving emotional journey. Emotions, akin to ocean tides, wield significant influence. By internalizing these stoic principles, we can learn to navigate their currents with heightened awareness, acceptance, and intentional choice. Keep in mind that emotional mastery isn't about suppressing emotions, but rather about fostering a healthier, more enriching relationship with them. 
So, set forth on this journey of self-discovery, allowing the wisdom of the Stoics to illuminate your path.